You're high about two inches. High into the right. Hit it. My name is Lynn Thompson. I'm the president of Cold Steel Incorporated. We make the world's strongest, sharpest knives and swords and edge weapons and tools. We're a martial company and I live a martial life. I try to live as a warrior. I train and practice to use all types of weapons, including empty hands all the way up to the latest in firearms to defend myself, my family, my community, and my nation. And I make no apology for it. One of my heroes is King David. He's the only man in the Bible that God said was a man after his own heart, but he was a man of the sword and he was a warrior. And of all the people in the Bible, who did God say? There's only one man, he says, that's a man after my own heart, the Lord said, and that was David. Hey, anybody that knocks somebody down that weighs, that's nine and a half feet tall, probably weighed 500 pounds, knocks him down, runs up, cuts their head off with a sword, he's my kind of guy. The warrior trains constantly so that he can defend himself and that sadly lacking thing, everyone wants to call security, everyone wants to depend on the police to do it, I think people should be responsible for themselves, uh, especially in self-defense. The Bible says when an armed man, fully armed, sits alert in his house, ready to defend it, no thief wants to break in. And so I say the same thing, if you're a warrior or um, who wants to mess with your family, who wants to mess with your community, who wants to mess with your country? See how lightning that is? It's a horrible feeling. Pressure is everything, you know that. Heat and pressure is how you forge a strong sword. That's it. So, if I want to be a strong sword, I get people that are better than I am and have them try to beat the crap out of me and they try to rise to the occasion. You have to be a lot better than the really, really big opponent. So when you're giving up a lot of reach, a lot of height, a lot of weight, a lot of strength, your skill has to be exponential in uh, comparison to that antagonist. So that's where weapons come in. <laughs> the weapon negates all of that physical advantages. I mean, God bless some people with some physical advantages and some with uh, others with none. Is that that fair that the person with no physical advantages has to be the, the, the whipping boy, the dog, the, uh, of, of the bigger, stronger, younger, heavier individual? No, that's what God, we learn how to make knives and swords and then pistols and all that stuff. I've always admired the ancient warrior. My goal is to obtain those same skill at arms and have the same physical abilities as the heroes of old. People ask me why I hunt, and particularly why I hunt with a handgun, or a spear, or a knife. Why do I put myself in such danger? I think it's important for a warrior to test themselves. It's not a very good idea to have to use deadly force and never done it before. I test my training with hunting dangerous game. It tests my own internal fortitude, my, my spirit, uh, my temperament, my nerves. They're all tested by these big game hunting trips. I've killed a dangerous seven, which is a rhinoceros, an elephant, a hippo, a crocodile, a cake buffalo, a lion, and a leopard. One of the opportunities that you get in hunting is you get experience with killing, and you learn how to kill uh, and not have your emotions uh, take over and destroy you. As my skill has grown, uh, the Professional hunters, they, they know me and they go, they don't get me closer. They say, ah, you can make it from here. So it just gets more and more challenging. And some of the places I hunt, you can't get close. So I would say my average shot is probably somewhere between 60 and 100 meters. But my furthest shot on game is 158 meters. And what was that? A kudu. For a pistol. For a pistol. Not very many people could do that, huh, Robert? Not offhand. Not offhand, baby. Who wants to go out there and make fun of me? This is 
is a 12 inch plate. This knife blade is 10 and a half inches long. So you can see, just give you some perspective, that's what I'm hitting. And you can see where my bullets have been smacking it. I'm the only one shooting at it really this morning. Pretty darn good shooting, I'm pretty happy with that. I probably didn't start training with weapons a lot until uh, 1978. 77, 78, I read John Sanchez's book, Slash and Thrust. I hunt with a spear because it's a real challenge compared to bow hunting or handgun hunting. Um, I think it's the next to using knives, hits about as dangerous as it gets. There we go. I've had a lot of heat and pressure since I was a, a small child. 13, my dad got a brain tumor and I was on my own. I provided myself with all my own clothes and a lot of my own expenses I took care of myself. I put myself through private universities with my own uh, funds. I worked for it, I saved for it and I overcame a lot and that's really helped me in life. I guess part of the reason I started at such an early age is look at me. I'm not skinny, you know? I was always a chubby kid and uh, everyone picked on me. I mean, I got hassled and, and people tried to pick fights with me and called names and all this stuff and at a very early age I started fighting back. I said I'm not going to take it anymore. People will make fun of Lynn because he's aggressive and whatever else, or, or like you say, you're not Mr. Body Beautiful, but, uh, but in front of his face, they don't say nothing. And that's what I respect. Let him say, you know, it's really easy to say the stuff behind someone's back, but to, their fa to his face, it's like, how you doing, Lynn? You know, and you know it's the same guy who's just saying, he ain't shit, he can't do nothing. And you know that's a, a lot of squat. The drive to train so hard is to back up my boasting that to be genuine. Uh, most people talk and talk and talk, but their abilities don't even begin to match the brags that they made. So my drive is constantly to be everything I say I am. Do I make sacrifices? Absolutely. <laughs> you can ask my wife, one day she asked me, it was Sunday, and I was gonna go shooting. She said, you know you're dead tired, Lynn. Why don't you stay home today? And I said, but, I said, I've made my brag, now I have to back it up. I said, I have to be what I say I am. Um, as I've said before, I'm not humble, but I don't have a stingy bone in my body. I'll give you the shirt off my back, but um, I try to be everything I say I am. I talk a lot about myself, but I try to make sure it's true. To me, it's not bragging if it's true. Someone could say, yeah, that guy talks a lot about himself, but everything he says is true. Okay, that's fair enough in my book. A number of years ago, I heard a radio program where they were talking about people in the future are gonna live their lives vicariously. They're gonna enjoy other people's adventures and other people's accomplishments from the safety of their own home, watching them on DVDs and video programs and television. And I thought, how sad. Those people will never have adventures. They'll never do anything on their own. They'll never taste victory, and they'll never eat the bitter pill of defeat. They're never going to risk their ass to get ass. I, I decided I didn't want to live my life like that. I wasn't going to uh, live life vicariously. I was going to go out and do things for myself. I believe in being an individual. I don't believe in group effort. I think everyone should shine for themselves. <laughs> Because I want my own uh, honor and glory, or I want my own defeat. You know, I want it. I want it. I want to either be able to brag, or I want to be able to sulk. One of the two. <laughs> I think everybody today, wherever you live, should as uh, ascribe to be a warrior. So if the shit hits the fan, they're a soldier that can fill the gap in the wall and protect their family and their community and their country. <laughs>